Oh yeah, it's mind pump time. All right, today's giveaway, exciting because it's MAPS Anabolic, the foundational MAPS workout program. Very effective at building strength, building muscle, boosting the metabolism. And you can get access for free, again, because we're very gracious giving people. We're awesome, aren't we? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of pumping our own tires here. So check this out. Here's how you can win free access to MAPS Anabolic. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make it a good comment. If we pick your comment, you'll get notified, and then you get free access to Maps Anabolic. Also, turn on your notifications and subscribe to this channel. Got to do those things as well. One more thing before we start the show. We are running a 50% off sale on two very popular workout programs, Maps Strong and Maps Powerlift, both half off. Go check them out. Head over to Maps Fitness Products. Dot com. Just don't forget to use the code August Special with no space for the discount. All right, here comes the show. So we have to address, uh, I got tagged at least 10, 15 times, a handful of DMs on uh, our good friend Mark Bell, uh, his PowerCast, his podcast. Mm -hmm. He had a recent guest on his show. Is uh, I forgot the guy's name. He's a, a biomechanics expert, smart guy. Uh, talking about uh, inclined chest. Now, I want to be careful because I, I did not listen to the entire episode and I I don't like jumping to conclusions uh, based off of a 60-second clip and there's a good chance that if I listen to his entire argument that he makes that maybe there's a lot of things that we would probably agree on. But the statement alone about uh, incline chest press not being a good exercise for your chest. For your for your upper chest. For your, it doesn't hit the upper chest. Just period. Yeah. Chest, I think is what he said, is just not a, it's not a good exercise, incline, incline press. And so uh, normally I wouldn't even address it, but we had so many people message us. I think we should talk about it. And it's not the first time I've heard a biomechanic expert shit on an exercise that we've probably touted as a phenomenal exercise. Yeah, you know what the problem with this, and this is sometimes the issues that I have with academia, it reminds me of, do you guys remember when it was, like, it was all the rage to use, um, I can't remember the equipment they would use, but they would measure muscle activation when people would do yeah, exercises. The, the ART uh, <coughs> machine or whatever. Like I don't that. think it was that. It was like muscle meets magnet or some shit. And, oh. and, and what they would do is- yeah. They would have someone do Matt, an exercise. I think. What was it? MAT. I think that was. A, there's a whole like um, uh, program centered around muscle activation uh, yeah. theory. Yeah. And so what they do is they'll, they'll they'll look at the machine, have someone do an exercise, and be like, "Oh, this exercise actually does do this or doesn't do that." And in some of those, they showed that a decline press activated the upper chest more than an incline press, or that dips activated the upper chest more than uh, incline press. The problem with some of the stuff is that in application, in the real world, it, that doesn't really pan out that way. I don't know a single person who trains their body for aesthetics or who trains and sculpts and builds a body who has done either exercise will say, oh yeah, I decline press has totally built my upper chest. Never works that way, ever in the real world. It's always the upper, you know, the incline stuff that builds the upper chest. I've experienced it that way. Everybody I've ever trained, every bodybuilder you ever talked to. So I think there's more to it than than they understand. And it's more than just looking yep. at biomechanics or just looking at activation. And that's a good example. You know, he's saying incline press doesn't work the upper chest or work the chest well. That's just not true because when people do it in the real world, that's exactly what you see. Well, it's it's an exercise that I have I've said on the show before is uh, one of the uh, biggest game changers for me as far as building my my chest and but i did also say that i or alluded to that it was probably because i avoided it for so long because i was weak in it so i didn't train incline press very much as, as a kid i did flat and decline if anything mm. so uh, i hated doing incline press because i was significantly weaker and it wasn't until my late 20s uh, that i set a personal goal of okay let's see if i can get my incline press to be as as equal to or close to as equal as my flat bench and to see what what would come of that and well what came of that was one of the best versions of my chest that I've ever had now specifically did you notice more upper chest yeah. development yeah absolutely yeah. yeah so and and that made a huge difference now 
had I trained uh, incline press most of my life and never changed or trained flat bench, I would I would go ahead and take a, a stab at it and say that the same thing would probably have happened had I started to do flat bench because I never did flat bench before. So I do think that you, you're not taking that into consideration also. So when people, when, when biomechanic experts like to play the game of this versus that, uh, and this is so much better based off of mechanically how it works. Well, that goes out the window when you, you take into consideration somebody's been doing that for so long and maybe they haven't been doing the other one. So and what I mean by that is, okay, let's say we all agree on uh, an exercise that is superior to another exercise as far as its ability to build muscle in any, in any specific area, right? And so because you hear this article, you go, oh, well, this guy says that this exercise is superior. So I do that one all the time. And I always do that one. Well, once you've been doing that for weeks, months, years consistently and avoiding the one that you thought was inferior, I would make the case that the inferior exercise now becomes the superior exercise because you never train it. Yeah, but that being said, and, right, That's and that's true. That's 100% true. That being said, that we don't understand everything about how exercises build muscle necessarily or why some exercises are superior to other exercises. For example, you know, on paper, you could look at, I don't know, a leg press. You could look at a hack squat. How about that? You could look at a hack squat, compare it to a barbell squat, and I could say, well, a hack squat, you're using more load, range of motion is very similar, uh, therefore, the hack squat is going to build more muscle. Now, in application, it's just not true. You, you know that when people do a free weight barbell squat, they typically tend to build more muscle generally speaking. Um, and it's just, just, it's like this with, with all the exercises. There's a lot of stuff we don't necessarily understand, but we know through practice that, you know, through yeah. years of practice that no, this actually works better in this way. For example, here's another one. I've heard many biomechanics experts say that sumo deadlifts don't build the butt very well. No, oh, look at the biomechanics. The glutes actually oh, yeah. are not that active. Yeah. It's a short range of motion. That's a big one right now. It is. I, I've done sumo deadlifts for years with clients who want to build their butts, and I will put it up as probably a top five exercise. One hundred percent, it's a staple move. For yeah, them. it's a top five exercise yeah. for building the butt. So, well, here's the thing too. I mean, it's a compound lift, and you're never going to truly isolate certain muscle groups. Uh, there's a lot of carryover that you know, like uh, in terms of it being close to an overhead press, you could make that argument, but you're still activating the chest. And if you're not really activating the upper chest and it's, it's getting involved with that press uh, and that's something you haven't stimulated before, you're going to see gains in your upper chest. So it's, it, to, to say that it has no upper chest value is pretty ridiculous. Well, there's another case I like to make for the incline press uh, being a, you know, can dare I say superior uh, chest exercise. And I've said it before on the show, why I used to love to teach my inexperienced clients incline before flat bench. Oh, it's technically easier. That's right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, it's, it's in, it puts you in a more- Places you in a preferable position. Yes, you're in a more favorable position to teach. So one of the hardest things to get uh, a client to do when teaching the, the bench press is to get them in the, the proper biomatic mechanical position, right? So here we were talking about a bio, biomechanic expert who is clowning on the incline press. Well, one of the most challenging parts about getting anybody to train their chest well is to get their body or get their posture in the most optimal position to activate the chest. Yeah, scapular retraction, pin them down. You have a nice slight arch in the low back, That's hips on the bench. You put someone on an incline and they sh it drops down. It puts them in that position. So it's e it is. It's 100% easier to teach. I did the same thing. Before I would have clients do a flat bench, I would have them do an incline bench. Not just for that reason. Here's another reason. Especially towards the end of my career when I was training uh, old people in advanced age, get somebody who's you know over 65 or 70 to lie flat on a bench just to get them in position. It's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. Get them to sit on an incline and it's much more natural of a position. But I'll make this argument. Look, I will make this argument all day long. Somebody who only does flat bench versus someone who only does incline bench, are they going to develop different looking chest? Even if you had two twins, are you going to see a little bit difference in the development of the chest? I'll argue yes. And I'll argue that the incline, you're going to see more upper chest development was with the flat. You're going to see more. And this is, by the way, this is decades of people's experience 
doing this exercise, which, you know, <clears throat> here's the problem oftentimes with the, the, I guess, I don't know what, for lack of a better term, the science worshipers, right? Is they, and you see this in medicine too. They discredit everything that's experience and anecdote. Oh no, that's, that's not right, scientific right. study. That's all anecdote. Look in medicine. Okay. I would trust uh, double blind placebo controlled studies are considered the gold standard. Do you know what's better than that? In my experience, thousands of years of anecdote. Yeah. You show me a medicine yeah. or an herb that has been used to treat, I don't know, bronchitis or fever that has been used for thousands of years. I'll trust the safety and efficacy of that over something that passed one double blind placebo controlled study. So one anecdote or two anecdotes or a dozen, maybe not, but when you have decades of anecdotes, how many people have done incline press for upper chest now, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, h h millions maybe over the, since what, the 19, when does the incline press kind of become popular or became a thing in the sixties? Yeah. So you're looking at decades and decades and decades of people in people developing their chest saying, oh yeah, this works my upper chest better and well, it develops it. To, to piggyback <laughs> off that analogy too, like, uh, you know, medical professionals stick with their specific system uh, that they're a specialist in. And so a lot of times they don't consider the bodies holistically and how all the systems interact with each other. And so to look at that specifically from a muscle activation uh, perspective is just a narrow view of what's really happening. It is. And again, even if you, okay, even if we look at the anatomy of the chest, it's got multiple insertions up and down the sternum. And so the muscle fibers don't just go straight across. They go across to the upper part of the sternum and then they kind of angle down like a fan towards the lower part. And those muscle fibers somewhat dictate or tell you when the muscle contracts, where the tension's coming from. But again, there's also the experience uh, component. And when, when I know, and beyond a shadow of a doubt, when people do lots of incline where they notice a lot of the development is in the upper chest, me as well, personally. Um, so to have someone come on there and be like, no, the biomechanics uh, don't work that way. Like you're discrediting like lots and lots of experience, which I think is silly. Again, exercise science is, is not, actually no science is 100% complete. You have to take into account people's experiences not just that you're thinking all the other variables like i keep trying to explain is that you're once you're you've been doing that for an extended period of time your body has gotten <clears throat> very good and adapted and when, when the ultimate goal is to build the chest to build muscle then doing the same exercise over and over and over again is less advantageous than doing something that's different even if it's consider even if we can agree that it's an inferior exercise yep. and that the problem that i have with when people come out with content that states things like this, that this versus that, or this is better than that, is a young. I, I can go back and think about what it was like as a kid in his you know late teens and early twenties trying to learn about this stuff, and I would read or see something like that, and then that, and because the person's credible, they're a PhD and seem to know what they're talking about, or back then, if they looked amazing, well, that was enough credit for you as a kid. And you go, oh, okay, he says this is terrible. This is... was yeah, this Never is do that. You never so do you that. you abandon it. Yeah, you, aban yeah. you abandon it completely because you've been... Why do the inferior thing? I'm going to do the thing that's better. And then you get trapped in three years of training the right. same chest exercise. Now all you're doing is fend presses yeah. you know, and flies. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. There's also the... like There's all these camps in the fitness space, and he's coming from the you know, muscle development, body sculpting, kind of bodybuilding camp, talking about developing different segments. He's the same guy that said that sissy squats load the quads more than barbell squats. Therefore, they're going to build more, you know, bigger quads or whatever. Here's something that they ignore completely. There's a functional component as well. And if I always press in horizontally and I never press in that incline position, I'm not going to have as wide of a range of functional strength in pressing. Now, for sports, it makes sense. I'll argue that an incline press is probably more functional. Well, that's what it was created for originally. Yeah, wasn't yep. isn't that right, Justin? Isn't an incline bench mm -hmm. the 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 origin the origin of it was for football? Oh, I don't for know that. for linemen. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. It's supposed to mimic the the angle that a lineman is coming out of their three point stance and hitting them. Yeah, well, that makes perfect sense. Right. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So, but also, does improving your functionality and your range of functional strength 
Does that contribute to a more aesthetic physique? Sure. Of course it does. Absolutely. But they completely ignore that and they only look at like, it's, it's what is it? Missing the forest for the trees or whatever. Right. You know, so that, mm -hmm. that can, speaking of incline press, by the way, PRX has a incline. Yeah. Press now. I see. Yeah. That. We can finally talk about it. I mean, I set it up in our studio. I was super stoked because that was the one thing when I ordered and, and, and got my own set here at my house, I was like, man, I, I do wish like I could incline this bench. It's kind of a bummer. Uh, and you know, they've been working on kind of how to, how to solve that issue. And so we have one here in the studio and I'm pretty stoked on it. So, so it folds into the wall, right? Like the flat does. Yep. Okay. Super convenient. Yeah. You can, you can fold it up, put it against the wall. Uh, and then it has like different angles so you can actually go incline all the way up into like a military press. Oh, wow. Oh, it'll go all the way up to a military press on it, huh? Now, what do you think? Yeah. You're the only one that's uh, set it up and used it. So what's your, what's your feedback on it? Did they do a good job as far as the engineering? The engineering sound, the, um, the only thing I would say it's a little bit sticky in terms of moving it and adjusting it to the different pinpoints. Uh, but that's something that I'm sure they'll probably have iterating. It, this was one of the first sort of prototypes, so I'm sure that they've kind of figured that out. Yeah, right. Then, we couldn't talk about it originally because they were just, it was just, they hadn't even released it yet, right? And it's official, Doug? Right. Is it on their website? <clears throat> yeah, it's on their IG account. So they're they're selling it. I haven't checked their website, but I'm sure it's there. If it's oh. on IG, I'm sure it is. Yeah, yeah. Very. They're they're crushing. I you know when I was up in Truckee, you know before I uh, before I got sick or whatever, I was uh, you know working out on on the equipment. We work out with it here, and I was showing uh, Jessica's friends. One of her friends is really big into working out, and he had heard about the PRX but hadn't used it. So he's like pushing it up and folding it in the wall, bringing it down. He's like, oh my gosh. He goes, I did. He thought because it folds into the wall that they would compromise stability. I thought the same thing. You just think of that. I mean, when you think of like a, a power rack, you know, for squatting, you think it's something that it folds away into the wall and you think it would be less stable, but the opposite it's is true. It's more stable. Yeah. It's actually the most, it's the most stable rack I've ever used because it's anchored into the wall, more stable than the cage that I, you know, I've had a, a cage for a long time. More stable than that. Mm -hmm. Looks like you can pre-order it. Pre-order it. Excuse me, on their website. So you got to get on there and pre-order it so you get when it comes out. But I mean, nice. they're, they're, again, the big problem with equipment, <clears throat> home equipment, for a long time was space. So they keep mm -hmm. they keep solving that issue. Um, and uh, dude, I have yeah, because I had two benches and now I can reduce it down to one because you can go flat all the way up to military. So you know, it's that's game changer because now everything can fold up into the wall. And really, the only thing left is like the dumbbells, like you know, having a good rack for that. But yeah, uh, they've figured everything else yeah, out. Yeah, and, and and by the way, <clears throat> if you have this, this is how it works. It goes. It can go from flat all the way up to essentially to military. You can fold it up into the wall and then use the rack for squats and stuff. So it's out of the way. Yeah, yeah. So it's so like once it's there, you can't use the rack for anything else. You could do everything in the rack with that bench on there. No, it's amazing. Hey, so we have. I have to bring this up, dude. I saw this. Uh, I saw it somewhere else first, and I thought it was like a joke. And then I think I saw Sean, I think Sean Baker, uh, a carnivore guy, right? He, I think he posted it and I fucking died. So, you know, California passed that, that law, I forget, S SB 120 or some shit like that, which basically allows a, a prisoner who uh, now identifies as a woman can now be transferred into the the woman's prison. And so what, now, could, poss what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Hey, yeah. did you see what's coming out? There's so the, the there's a, a for there sure must be hundreds of thousands of transfer well, applications. No, not just that. What there's of uh, the first girl who's pregnant already has came had just came. Oh my wow. God. So one for sure is all, already pregnant. <laughs> and but that can't happen because it's a woman. <laughs> no, well, weird. So crazy, dude. How, oh. how fucking so funny that is. Dude. We throw, <laughs> I swear to God, dude, we throw logic out the window. First of all, uh, prison is a different environment than the real world. Okay. So you can have a bunch of guys. Well, you do. You have a bunch of men in prison and they, especially if they're in there for a long time, they, they can be straight as they want. Oh, yeah. They do a bunch of gay oh. stuff. I mean, it's just, just stuff that happens. Isn't there a statistic on that? That like actually a, a, there's a large percentage of them that are having butt sex, but are not gay. 
Oh yeah, I don't know about <laughs> yeah. that. I don't know. I don't know what the statistics. Yeah, I like how you said butt sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Adam. That's one way they do it. Yeah, uh, but but nonetheless. No, uh, I think I, I, I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. Doug, do you know the fact of this? I'm sure you've googled. Doug, this how before. much you have butt sex? <laughs> yeah. Doug? yeah, I'm no expert on this. Stats. I'm afraid. Huh? <laughs> don't lie. Don't act like you don't know the answer to this. <laughs> Doug, well, Google butt sex I, in prison real quick. <laughs> 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 You're not gonna get me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Click on images. I, I know in the the women's prison. Uh, there, there had been a lot of, uh, you know, uh, like with the guards there. There'd been a lot of interactions and, and stuff they had to crack down on with women kind of coming on to to the, the guards. Well, so you know what? They'll think about it this way, right? This is a bit of a challenging situation. So you're cisgender man, and then you're like, you know what? I, 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 I'm trans. I want to transition to a woman. Now you transition to a woman. Okay. It might be the best option to put you with the other women. Because you imagine a trans woman in the men's prison? That yeah. might be a lot worse, yeah. dude. Because you don't even well, have to be a trans woman in the men's prison. that's your thing, you're, you know, well, I don't even think, set up for... I, <laughs> I don't even think they have to transition. I think they just have to say, I identify as. Really? Yeah, that's what it said. Or at least that's what the article said that Shit, I read. if I'm going to jail for life... I mean, what do you got to lose? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the go-to move. Yeah. No, why for, wouldn't you? Yeah. No, you, I, uh, the, at least the article that I was reading didn't say, oh, here we go, Doug. What do you got? At least one incarcerated. Uh, what uh, see, see the, identifying. Yeah. But I mean, but are there like, are there standards or is it just identify? I think that's all you have to say. If that's it, that's insane. Dude, that's because, a, I, what, that's what the article said yeah. that I read. You don't have to dress different or anything. They, no, they all, all wore the same clothes. So remember? there's there. I don't know. Oh, so right. maybe, maybe when we're talking later, Doug can look up the law. I think it's SB, SB 120 or some shit like that. SB 132. It's, thank you. That's what it is. It looked maybe that so, up. sounds like another Newsom law. Oh, geez. <laughs> well, it, it is a California law, and I do believe that all they have to say, they just have to say it. They don't have to make like a full-on transition. They just have to say that they identify as a woman, and then they can now be transferred into the woman's prison. I mean, think about, well, we'll find Dude, out. It's oh. gone so far off the deep end. It's insane. Yeah, so current policy allows any biologically male prisoner to request a transfer into a women's jail or prison without any questions asked, so long as they identify as women. <laughs> wow! Is even this is absolute absurdity. Listen, listen. Yeah, even if they were initially jailed or imprisoned for committing violence against women. Wow! Oh, yeah, smart. Wow! What a smart. Law. <laughs> well, you know, hey, hey. <laughs> here's how. Here's how anti it's ridiculous. Here's how ridiculous they are. I'll tell you what they. Re you guys know this, right? In California, they removed weights out of prisons a long time ago. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. They got rid yeah. of weights because they don't like inmates. Uh, getting too big and strong. And the truth is, the fucking truth is, when you look at the actual science, people who exercise, who better their health, they actually had better behavior, uh, better moods, things to look forward to. It was also a very effective tool to take away and punish people if they acted up. And it was quite valuable to a lot of inmates. I mean, if you're in there for fucking 10 years and you can lift weights still and work out and you're like, you know what? I'm going to act cool because I don't want to miss my weights or it's a way of bettering. No, no, they got rid of that. But now they're like, by the way, uh, you can go sleep with the chicks if you say that you're one. That's insane to me. Because I'll tell you what right now, if you're in jail for years, if you get sentenced for decades, that's the play. If you ask me, Fuck that's that, totally the play. If I go in there for six months, I'm going in like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I gotta be there for decades. Like you know, I identify as a woman. I, I mess fuck. around. Yeah. yeah, I'll change yeah. my mind when I get out. Yeah, hey, <laughs> yeah I'm putting hey. panties on immediately. Yeah, hey, a hey, Adam, how was prison? Yeah, hey, you know, not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I was doing, it, was, it was a good time, dude. I was. Uh, <laughs> I had a harem. Met some, met some nice ladies. What yeah. the yeah. fuck? Dude? Wow, what are they doing, we live, dude? Bro, we live in a. It's a weird yeah. fucking time. Speaking dude. of weird stuff, did you guys see the, the house that was for sale in Walnut Creek for eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars? So first of all, uh, dude, for, what, what is it like? A hold shack? on a second. Hold on a second. First of all, anybody from anywhere else in the country, I say eight hundred and fifty grand for a house, and that's like, man, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah, it's, that must be like a no, mansion. No, this was a house that caught fire. It was burned out. So it's literally a, a, the remnants of a house after it caught fire and burned out. <laughs> it's just Ashes. I was going to ask if it had all four walls, but it doesn't even have that. $800, $850,000 for a burnt to crisp house. Oh, yeah. You got to tear it down and do do whatever. There was another in Redwood City. Dang. In Redwood City, I think for $600,000, there was a like a log cabin on a piece of land. And when I say log cabin, I literally mean 
Like imagine if me and Adam built a cabin out of logs. <laughs> <laughs> like a Lincoln log cabin. Yeah, I would just like, you know, I, I, that works, you know, yeah. yeah. $600,000. It's getting wild uh, out here uh, with the prices. That's so stupid. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's getting pretty crazy. Hey, so um, so I know you're not Justin because you're busy with the, the move and stuff, but um, uh, Adam and, and I and Doug, we've all kind of been just sitting at home. We're still... Bored, Isol- to, bored to death dude. isolated because yeah. yeah. we still have the the pangolin disease watching or- jenny jones and yeah uh all those other oh reality God, shows what a great idea i'm getting shredded though i, I, I know <laughs> yeah we got the we're you on the diet bro yeah you know what i found I, I i'm not uh you know i watched all the seasons of 16 and pregnant so i can't obviously watch that anymore oh, there so, you go but i found uh fuck boy wow fuck boy <laughs> Fuck Boy Island. Sounds amazing. Oh, yeah. it is just as fucking terrible as 16 and Pregnant. So how dude. does this work? Tell me that this. Premise. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, listen to the, listen to this show. I I mean it's it was HBO. So I'm I'm a little I'm a little uh, uh, disappointed in HBO that they would actually put trash like this out. But uh, it sucked me in. Right. Uh, this is when you feel like shit. I've talked about this before. I I'm a you just tra- want to see people worse off. Yeah, I want to see if I could. Yeah. I want to see somebody who feel definitely that that's watch uh, intervention and hoarder and 16 practice. totally right so here's the premise of the show i forget what tropical island they're on but they're going kind of on a tropical island there is three beautiful single ladies that are looking for love and if they find a, a match uh i think both the couple gets a hundred thousand dollars towards their wedding or some shit like that so that's like the prize oh my god okay so then they they bring 24 dudes to the island 12 of them are fuck boys 12 of them are looking for love and so the, 12 of them are like, I don't want love. I just want to Yeah, bang. 12 of them are, are there in the for the game. Because if they get picked and the girl doesn't figure out that he's a fuckboy, he still wins his 100000 She got played. Oh, <laughs> so right? they got regular guys, basically. Yeah, and then... <laughs> <laughs> so, I just got to lie to her. At the end of every week, the girls each get to eliminate one guy. Now, the part that I'm dying right now is that I, I've gotten to like four episodes of this thing and they had to bring more guys to island because these dumbass girls keep fucking, they keep uh, kicking off all the fuck, uh, all the good guys. They're, oh no, oh, yeah. yes. Of, yeah. They, of course. Because what happens, so what happens is they each, they each girl gets to el- eliminate one guy per week. So three go off per week. And then after they say, okay, he's the one I'm eliminating. Then right before they leave, the, the host of the show says, are you a nice guy or are you a fuck boy? And they have to, so they tell them. And then if they were a, a nice guy, they know the numbers now. Like, okay, shit, we had 12 nice guys. Now we have so the nine. nice guys all got kicked off. Yeah. So like in the first three weeks, like I think, <laughs> I think literally, I think uh, nine out of the like 12 that was eliminated were all nice guys. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. The official name is actually F Boy Island. Yeah. Well, F-Y-I. we know what that stands for though. Don't yeah, of course. But yeah, I mean, yeah. that's an official title. Yeah. In case somebody's yeah. looking it up. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure if they put yeah. fuck boy in there, they'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a fun boy? <laughs> no, no. I'm it's a fun, fun boy. boy. Oh, no. It stands fuck boy. I mean, it's literally what it is because they interview them and that's what they, the guys all do their little, which, by the which way, which is too. hilarious because it just highlights those guys are probably trying way too hard, you know, and, and like asking all the questions about, like, you know, are you interested in kids and, uh, you know, stuff like that where they could just, you know, read it a mile away. How bad do you have to want to be on television to to actually interview to get on one of these things? Like, how bad? Do oh, you- so here's my theory. So my theory is, oh, there's Justin. Your screen came off for a second there. My, yeah, here, I got a call. Here, yeah, no, no problem. My, my theory is this, is that if nobody going on these shows actually is looking for love or I want to fight... First of all, that's the worst fucking place to find a good partner. It just is. I think they're all oh, yeah. they're all aspiring actors and actresses, and this is uh, one way that they get themselves on media as they sign up for these di- these dating shows. I don't I agree. Well, with that. some of them I are do. even married. And Come go on, on that we have show a we have just a, to get like attention. Yep. Yeah, I mean they've I, exposed that. Now I'm not disagreeing that right with that. I'm just saying I don't think all of them. Are. I mean, are, I think most of them are. We had a buddy that was on the Bachelor, Bachelor, or Bachelorette, or whatever what it's called. I don't want to talk shit. He's yes. a nice guy. <laughs> I, I think I think most. Yeah, of them, I like him. I think a lot of them. Yeah, you're talking about Ben. He's a, he's a great guy. But I think a lot of them are going on there because they just want to be on TV. Yeah, uh, for sure. That's what I, but that was what I just said. I said, how bad do you want to be on TV that you would allow yourself to be called a fuckboy yeah. and put your shit out there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, 
People don't care, dude. You yeah, must not. I mean, you, and then you, uh, imagine what your dating life is going to end up being like afterwards. Oh. Like you're a self-proclaimed <clears throat> fuck boy. Like yeah. that's. Such, I mean, at least uh, I grew up thinking that that was an insult. Is it now? Am I? Am I? Am I not correct? Or is it now become? Uh, a badge of I honor. I think some dudes think it's cool. Like when you back in the day when they would say player, like, oh, he's a player. I'm like, yeah, I'm a player. You know what I mean? That's oh, you, right. you think it's like that? Yes. Oh, yes, I'm a fuck yeah. boy. Yeah. Like, oh, I just bang. You know what I mean? That's what I, you know how it is with young guys and their egos or whatever. Oh, you know? wow. There was one, there was one dating show on Netflix that was weird where. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about where they had to like dress in costume. Yes, dude. Did you see that one? Yes. So they wore, okay. So here's the premise of the show. I forgot the name of it. Uh, uh, Beast. I don't remember. Something like that. There's something Beast or whatever. Uh -huh. They have professional makeup artists put like uh, put them into character. So like one person looks like a dolphin. Another person looks like an owl. What? Like it's, it's really creepy. Yeah. Like, like a like demon. Beastiality stuff. They, they, they made this girl look like a demon. Yeah. And yeah. Like, it was weird. It's really weird. Like professional makeup. It kind of looks creepy. It's so good. Sexy Beast. Look what they're wearing there. See Sexy that? Beast. Yeah, yeah. That's it. What? And then the idea is that they meet and they go on dates and then you pick the person based on the personality. Uh, <laughs> so based on their personality, but it's weird because the makeup is so good that it's almost yeah. like, like I wouldn't be able to. You like, have no idea what they look like. None. Like, and then they go to the reveal and I was like, oh, that's what that guy looks like. Oh yeah. Like. You can't weird. even, you I, can't even take, tell, you can't tell their, their nationality. I mean, that's, the race, that's just the next level to the one that, remember they came out with that one last year, which I think the sequel just came out again is a uh, uh, blind, blind date where they had a date through a wall. Yeah. So they didn't oh, ever, they yeah. never saw each other. Right. So same concept. So these actually get to meet each other, but then they're dressed up as animals. <laughs> they look weird. Yeah. Now I know there's some yeah. some people are into that though. Right? Well, you can at least see their, at least you get an idea say, of their uh, their their body, right? So you can see if they're kind of healthy or whatever when they come in or not healthy, right? So because the blind date you get nothing. They literally they, that one they had to you had to court somebody for you know a couple months through a wall where you can't see. Well, anything. what's funny about sexy beasts is that they'll 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 have to pick right, so they'll send one person home, but before they send them home, they get to actually see what they look like. And a couple times they kicked, they sent the person home. That's that's really good looking. So they take yeah. off the like you know baboon mask or whatever and everything. And they, you could tell them looking at them, they're like, "Damn it, I sent home the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's it's, handsome. What, what the hell?" It's interesting. Yeah, it's pretty funny actually. What, what is the? Uh, do you guys know what the stats are on? I remember years ago when I looked this up when it was first getting really popular. Um, what? How many people that actually meet now through a dating website? Oh, I think it's a majority. It, it is. Oh, yeah, it has to be. Yeah. Well, it, is, it is a majority. It, it was like, uh, I want to say it was like two, two out of three. Is it, is it something like that? Do you know what you, it's, 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 it's gotta be close to if the last time I checked, if I'm not mistaken, it was something like 78% or something like that. Yeah. It's crazy. Like a majority of people meet. Well, online. so now they've siphoned it off. Right. So you have like different, uh, interests. Like if you want like a long-term relationship, you go like e-harmony or whatever, then you get, there's like scales down of like just a, a night hookup. Uh, you know, versus, uh, you know, if you want the girl to decide whether or not she uh, likes you first. So I have interesting little niches. I have a question for you guys. This is a th theory that I have because my dad comments on stuff like that. My dad's old school, right? He grew up in Sicily, quite poor, or whatever. My mom from the same exact town, right? So he says, you know, he goes, all this, this choices is too many choices. It's not good. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, he goes, look at all the choices now we have to watch movies and stuff and, and on TV. He goes, you spend 45 minutes trying to pick a movie you can't choose because every movie you, 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 can't, you can't make a decision. He goes, I think that's what's going to happen with all this huh. dating stuff. You can't make a choice because you feel like there's an infinite number of choices. What do you guys think about that? I don't know if I agree with that. I, I, could argue, I think I could argue it both ways. I think that there's some value <laughs> like... <clears throat> you don't think it increases the amount of the, the the percentage of people who are like, you know what? I'm just going to always keep things open because there's this endless sea of potential mm. that I'm just going to. I mean, I'm sure there's a percentage of that that happens, but I would think that at least for me now, this is this is great. That you're asking this question because you're probably a really bad example for this because you got married so young, right? Where I would, well, say, I got remarried recently. Yeah, but I mean, you didn't you didn't. Speak have a long dating pro you didn't have a, no. a, a long dating cycle where i had a very long dating cycle i obviously waited all the way till i was 30 years old before i really settled down and 
for me, that that process more than anything else was a major learning process on who I am and what I really want. More so than it is like, oh my God, there's so many options and because I dated so many different Do you think it would have been different? Because our generation, we came up knowing both, you know, with internet, without internet. Imagine if you're, let's say you're 22 right I think now. it might speed that process up. You think so? Yeah, like so, okay, so if it was me... Uh, your 22 year old Adam right now, right now, right now, now the, uh, you know, say whatever amount of girls that I had to date to finally kind of piece. Together. And I, cause there's a very, there was a very clear shift in the type of woman that I dated in my life. And it didn't happen until I was in my late twenties. Did this kind of like aha happen? The first half was I was attracted to all the things that were dealt with my insecurities. Like I, I wanted to be the father figure in the relationship and the teacher. And like, so I was attracted to all different types of girls, but that was the the main insecurity that mm-hmm. was driving me back to the same ones. I didn't unpack that till I was almost 28 years old. Once I did, I made a complete shift to the, the to what I started to look at girls and then the ones that went on after that. So I think if I was going through because I think it speeds the dating cycle up if you have an app like if I had an I can't imagine like for me it was like oh I, I met someone at the grocery store or I met someone at the gym and the randomness of that or at a concert like it would take a while for that to happen or like my buddy who's still using dating apps and things like that and is single seeing him like man he lines up like four dates in a week <laughs> you know what I'm saying like that was like unheard of back when yeah, we but were it's y- endless though you know yeah. what I mean? I don't, I don't, it doesn't run out. You know, statistically, people are settling down at lower rates now than ever before, all across modern society. Yeah, but you could also, I don't know if it's that though, right? Could right. be lots of factors. Yeah. And you could also make the case it's that it's like having a buffet, you know, like you can go <laughs> up and everything's awesome and you just keep stuff in your face. After a while, it's like it gets old, man. Like you want a real nice, uh, refined meal that that you know well, it, it, that's more attractive to me well, after yes, a certain point. I'm, no, yeah, Justin's like it's, it's like all cheese. about food. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's just like cheese. Okay, I like cheddar. That's I mean, it. I I think of it more like a, a, the learning process of learning about a, a real partnership. Like that takes a while. It's not at least in my opinion, that's not. Uh, well, one of the big difference. See, this is a big difference between men and women. Is that women have this natural biological clock that tends to put 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 them in that situation where they're like, okay, look, I need to start settling down. I'm reaching a certain age. I do want to have children, so I want to make sure I settle down with someone. Guys don't have that. And so I could see this being more of an issue for men because theoretically, I mean, we could have kids whenever we want, right? So a guy's like, well, I don't care. You know, I'm 40. I'll just keep dating. I mean, it definitely there's definitely going to be guys that, uh, that are already uh, prone to Peter Pan syndrome. That this is going yeah. to make it worse, yeah. right? They're already they're already stuck in that, and then there's there is a buffet to use Justin's words of of women out there for them, so they don't feel they're ever going to starve, so they don't they don't they don't ever slow down doing that, and that just makes their issue worse. But then there's I think what I what I think is the majority is the dating cycle and or and dating people is really this process of figuring out what it is uh, that you really like, what what it is that you're attracted to that is healthy for you and that is not healthy for you. And a lot of learning that is just going through <laughs> going through multiple well, relationships. Yeah. I think too, I mean, it's at a certain point you realize with these dating apps, it's not challenging enough to, uh, you know, for it to have purpose. So for me specifically, like I was looking for something that, you know, stimulated me intellectually, but also... Uh, you, you know, it was a bit of, um, you know, that, that sort of a hunt mentality. Like I, I, I want to pursue somebody because I, I, at the other end of that, you know, there's lots of value in that relationship because, you know, I had to work for it. So, you know, not having to work for it as much, I think it really taints the whole process. Yeah. I'd say there's actually some, definitely some, some truth to that. Um, so I, when I, I mean, Jessica, I was not looking to date anybody. Remember I had gotten divorced and that's, a, by the way, a lot of people don't know this, but when you're going through a divorce, there's years before that where you actually have to mourn and like you've made that decision over the course of a long time. Like you just make the decision overnight. But Jessica was like, hit me like a, like a thunderbolt. It was, it was not, I was not looking to meet anybody. I don't want to be with anyone. And I couldn't help it. It was just somebody that, uh, you know, I, I wanted to be with, but I do, I do agree with you, Justin. I think there's some value in that, in that pursuit. Here's the other part of it too. We're constantly being told, especially young men are constantly being told 
that being married sucks. It's boring. Oh, you got kids. Life is over. So it's like we're sold mm -hmm. that message on top of it. Then on the other end of it is this plethora of availability through all these apps and stuff. And you can go on apps and see people who just want to have sex. And so I, I, I think all of these factors play into the, to well, what I was saying. What, what are the statistics on um, people staying together that find each other through these dating apps? Isn't it, isn't it getting better? Isn't that part of why it's had so much success? Is the people that actually use these apps end up? That's having, a good question. I believe it. Yeah. Is. I mean, I think you're right. Because you got to think there's some. There, there's some. I mean, I could, like I said, I could argue. I think either case yeah, that would actually be good, right? Less people, maybe less people are getting married, but mo the ones that do, more of them are. That's what I would think. Is it you? You get to filter out so much more, man. Uh, I mean, there's probably a lot of relationships looking back now that if I had to have met had met them through a dating app and actually had their profile, I was like, oh, look, she was bipolar. And she, and this is <laughs> They're not going to put that in their profile. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I could have found that shit out a lot earlier, you know what I'm saying? I may not have wasted six months to, to figure it all you're, out. And you're right. They're actually more likely to stay together. See? Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a great uh, observation. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, I would agree with that. That's interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, but they're not going to put that they're bipolar on <laughs> unless Unless it's bipolar people trying to find other... You uh, know they have dating have apps? Have you keyed a car before? Check. Yeah. 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 Something yeah. like that. Crazy, Valuable information. <laughs> Crazylove.com. Have you guys... Did you guys know that there's dating apps for people with STDs? So they meet, they meet up with that. people with the same STD? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's it's smart. I mean, it, it, it sort of helps, right? Um, so it's all out in the open. Yeah, I I don't know. I just feel like that it we're getting so good at ref now. Mind you, I'm I've never used one of these apps in my life before, so I don't I don't know what it's like to be someone going through that. But I would imagine that it's making the process uh, easier to get to figure or to figuring out what it is that you really want, and you can filter that at a much higher rate than where we ha ha have to take that more uh, at chance back when we were dating. It was like, you meet somebody and let's hope I guessed right yeah, on this surprise. One. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I, I think that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and, re and rejection stings more when it's in person, Yeah, you know, like on online, it's like, Oh, well, you know, I just swipe left or whatever yeah. it is. Next. You know? I mean, yeah. the truth is I don't, I don't think that I would ever, like if I, let's say things didn't work out with Katrina and I or whatever like that. And I was uh, all of a sudden on the market at, you know, 40 something years old. Right. Uh, I, I don't, I still don't think that I would use a dating app. I still, I, I think I would just prefer to do it the old school way. So mm -hmm. even though yeah, I'm, like the old school way, like DMing, yeah. Yeah. Ma <laughs> mail order bride. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. speaking of surprise, I watched a movie yesterday that was surprisingly amazing. So remember the original Suicide Squad when that came out? Mm -hmm. uh, the d it wasn't that good, right? Did you guys like the original? It was one? decent. It wasn't that good. The new, su the new Suicide Squad. Uh, hilarious. Really Dude. well made. Different cast, same people. Different cast. It's a different spin. And you can tell. John Cena in that one? Yes. And the way they, they yeah. put it's the way that they did it, they did it such a good job uh, artistically, the way that they injected humor. Super catches you off guard. The first 15 minutes of the movie catches you completely off guard. You're like, what the hell is going on? Oh, really? And then it changes directions. Really, really good. Some who recommended mm. it to me? I think it might have been Max Lugavere that recommended it to me. He's like, dude, great movie. I'm like, Suicide Squad. I'm like, the first one sucked. Put it it's on. It's kind of funny how how DC has to go back over movies they've produced. Like, oh, that sucked. And let's try it again. Well, it's not <laughs> yeah. it's not a remake. It's not they. I mean, they they refer back to the other Suicide Squad. You, you got to watch it. I don't want to give it away. Yeah, I'm gonna but watch it. Really, okay. yeah, all right. Really, really, really good. They did a, a phenomenal job. I'll with try it. it, even though like your shit's suspect. Whenever you do recommendations. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I want to read to you one of my favorite YouTube comments I've read in a long time. Let's <laughs> hear. Yeah. Ooh. So I just I just saw this one, dude. Uh, the YouTube you I, you know I was reading them yesterday. People were so funny like someone was talking shit about the uh economics debate that we had the other day anyway, they were talking about what you said by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and nobody on there was no, no. <laughs> they're talking about we. How, talking about we. no it was we it was we it was us saying that we don't don't we're don't, team, dude. don't know cool. we're talking about economics and then my response is like we'll drop where you disagree and then well i don't really have anything to say yeah it was <laughs> The fuck is that? I'm just gonna talk shit and walk away. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna talk shit, but yeah. then I have nothing to contribute. Like, hey, challenge! I, I'm all I'm up for a, a, a conversation or a debate on something. I'm open minded. Hey, no, so YouTube always brings yeah, like, be a man. The, 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 the troll. <laughs> they always bring the trolls. Listen, to this one. This is a comment. Me describing the podcast to other people. An Italian, a hot guy, 
and a dude who won't shut the fuck up about himself. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Dying. Hey, you're the hot guy, Justin. Of course he's the hot guy. <laughs> Is that me? Yes, no, of course he's the hot guy. <laughs> Bro, I always get labeled as a guy because I... Bro, you're, you're the guy that's on the romance novel, dude. Come yeah. on. Yeah, but, but, like, but, but no. they said the guy who won't shut the fuck up about himself. Yeah. So Adam, <laughs> like, that's me. I'm sorry. It's, uh, I do. Oh, well. I get it. Whenever I... And you know what? By the way, I'm going to address this. Fuck you, YouTubers that feel this way too. Okay? This is a skill. <laughs> he's a, hold on a second. Let me tell you a story about myself. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about myself <laughs> real quick. What's <laughs> his handle, dude? Yeah. This is, it reminds me of when I was competing. Yes. <laughs> This is a, this is an acquired sk- skill for coaches and trainers is the ability to humanize yourself and to tell a story. So rarely ever do I tell a story that's like check out how cool I was. Okay? Yeah, yeah. It's normally yeah. No, you're much you're more trying to be enough. relatable by Yeah, by it's normally your like own experience. Let me tell you about the story where I fucked up too or I made this mistake yeah. or I didn't do these things so you can relate like that and so you can re- and I can humanize myself for the audience so I do know there's a percentage of people that appreciate it, but then there's a few assholes out there that think it has me have everything to do with me talking about myself oh it's a good time alright so I got some cool interesting <laughs> news for you you guys know McDonald's is being sued right now or is in a lawsuit I should say <laughs> when's it not isn't it always being sued well, not- over what this time no. it's not the hot coffee what's next no 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 so it's a lawsuit having to do with McDonald's okay so here's what the title says a lawsuit alleged that the company that makes McDonald's ice cream machines intentionally designed flawed code to profit from repairs. Oh. So you know how often... So that's a thing, right? That's a thing. You go to McDonald's... Yeah, it's ice cream machines always down. Fucking bro. manufacturers do it. You know, uh, Apple, every time they have updates, somehow my phone gets fucked up. I mean, all these companies do that Dude, stuff. how slimy is that? Now, right? how do they, how do they, how do they figure that out? I don't know how they would figure that out, but it, obviously if they have a lawsuit, they've got some evidence to show that the code, they pro- someone probably put the patterns together. <clears throat> They're like, dude, what is it with this? Every one of these machines. Yeah, that's that- shady. Oh. Yeah. Cause I, I remember that as a kid, that was like, please let the machine be not broken because it was always broken. Yeah. It was a pain in the ass every single time. I remember that. But too. now, oh, the- <laughs> Yeah, that's soft serve. Oh man, that's the you know that's the one thing McDonald's you know nailed. That I mean, and their, their fries. And the I fries. mean, I feel like uh, the car industry has been doing this to us forever. I mean, don't you? As soon as, soon as the warranty's over, super ironic to me uh, that we can build something that fucking flies the moon and back and totally yeah. fine, but we can't we can't get a car to go past a hundred thousand miles without I mean, the transmission. Meanwhile, going this some- piece of shit Honda, like you can't even you can put like. 600,000 miles on it and it still feels like nothing's ever gone wrong. Yeah, yeah dude. Uh, and 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 that's been that way for how since I was a kid, since we've been driving. You know what though? They've they've made a big deal. I remember as a kid, you guys remember when if a car had 100,000 miles on it, you, you might as well throw it away. No, it's not true anymore. Now cars, they they generally go a lot longer. I don't so they've know. definitely made some improvements. I, I don't know about that. I feel like for, yeah. it's pretty standard that around 100,000 miles, shit starts going That's wrong. You guys buy American oh, cars. yeah. You yeah. get all the idiot lights to pop up and, the, oh, my God, I have to take it to you know the, the dealership. That's because you yeah, guys. So that way they can get their money. That's you guys in your Chevys. That's yeah, why. It's a scam, dude. Yeah. It's all. Yeah. It's, a, it's all. It's all a scam, <laughs> man. I, I, I pissed off so many people yeah. right now by saying uh, that. Anyway, dude. Hey. So I, I went to a concert uh, not too long ago, which you know was great because it was open and they're all worried. We had to wear masks and whatnot, but like we were in there, and it was a it was a it was a really fun punk show. It was a super small kind of venue, but there was this opening band. Uh, that I thought was really, really wild, really interesting, like why they would kind of mash these two genres together. So uh, it, basically they had a combo of the Sex Pistols. You guys ever heard of the Sex Pistols? Of course. Yeah, of you know, course. From, yeah, right? So they were like a covering Sex Pistol band with Spice Girls, and they were dressed up like Spice Girls. Wow. Was, wow. it, was yeah. it good? Big fat guys, you know, dressed up as <laughs> Spice Girls. So I'm like, really? This makes sense. You know, like this is, this is part, like this is like not even ironic anymore. Like that seems like something that is just normal. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I, I love the Spice Girls back D- in the day. Didn't they all, they all went on to go do like big things by themselves, didn't they? Somewhat. Aren't Some they all, did. yeah, aren't they all still super famous yeah. doing stuff like, but individually? Dude, that-, that, that was a thing for a while. Spice Girls was like, <laughs> Everywhere, oh my god! Tell me what I want, what you really, really want. Yep. Well, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, that's the jam. What, what what is that, Justin? In in the music industry, when they figure out like a hack like that, when you that that was their part of that, right? They're part of like 
oh wow, when we throw you know a group of hot chicks together, just like they did with the back. Yeah, it's all engineered. Yeah, yeah, it's just like the Backstreet Boys, just like all that kind of stuff. Like they had some, uh, you know, brilliant mind in there that already knew like all those different types of, of chord structures and ways to kind of engineer this pop bubblegum kind of music and then then fill fill it in with certain looks yeah because right? most of the time they're gonna, not they weren't all like buddies and friends hanging out but no they, it, they met when it's they not like no boy, like boys to yeah. men was like all buddies that were singing in the, yeah. the high school hallway like that and shit right. together right where these other ones they're like here's a cute yeah. guy here's this one let's put them all together like now you're all friends yeah but they were a phenomenon yeah. for a second they were yeah. massive for a second so. they, i think they're they still i think they still are like famous like which that. one's the one that married uh, Beckham, which one was that? Oh, that's a, not Sporty Spice. That's uh, um, which one? Yeah, what's her name? Posh, the, posh Spice. Yeah, she's Posh a, Spice. Yeah. She's the one with the exactly. the tattoo down her back. I don't know. Oh, I love that tattoo. The, the, the only hot. I mean, well, yeah. the, she was the hot one. <clears throat> posh Spice was the. Yeah, she was. She was. She got a little. She got a little bony there for a second. She didn't look very healthy. Really? Yeah, for no, a second there. I, she I, I looking, thought she was pretty good. Well, looking. Hey, okay. speaking of looking healthy, uh, your skin's looking pretty healthy. You over like there. that? I know you must be using Caldera. More I now. I've been throwing it on like crazy every uh, single day. Now, yeah. now especially up. We, in, let's just call it man care. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's a new thing. You know what, dude? I told I said this last time. I was reluctant to use. I don't. I never put anything on my skin. I have this just natural Mediterranean glow. You know, you can see it on camera. Very nice. Here's the thing, though. I'm it's, always it's got a golden sheen. Yeah, I'm. A, <laughs> I'm afraid to rub. And I'm the guy who talks about himself all the time. This yeah. is a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> hey, YouTube says it right. I I'm afraid to put oil on my skin because my skin's naturally kind of oily anyway. But whatever they put in the caldera it balances out my skin, so I don't get oilier from using it. It just balances it out so that it's not. I don't get like oily, you know, segments or whatever. No, really serious. Good. No, you do. It does look good right now. I'm a mess right now. So I haven't, I mean, we haven't shaved. So I haven't seen Vicky for my haircut. I haven't had my caldera because I'm downstairs in the other bathroom. So I don't got it in there. So I look like I probably aged 10 years this last Now, what years. are you doing in the room by yourself this whole time? <laughs> <locked>? <laughs> Do you really want to know or what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we want to know, man. Yeah, 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 Are you experimenting? Uh, I mean, uh, he's irritated all day by that. I, I talk, yeah, I talk no, with I him know. on text. You have no uh, idea. He's the biggest asshole. Just right? sitting there, just uh, uh, yeah, just angry. If you guys thought I was grumpy yeah. when I'm healthy, man, I tell you what, I I am a grouch when I'm not feeling good, dude. I'm just a, not fun to be around for sure. So just watching everything you can. Huh? Yeah, I've watched everything on TV. I should be actually a little more. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, I'm able to work, so uh, so I'm in my emails and things like that. So I've been doing a little bit of work uh, in in there. I've watched a lot of television. I listen to some audio books, not as much as I should. I, by now, I could have finished like four books if I would have disciplined myself. But, you know, right when you feel bad and you don't feel good, it's it's hard to do the thing, yep. like those types of things, like growth-minded things, things that would help me. I totally should. I know I should. Uh, but it's like I'm in this, you know, watch, you know, fuck boy island type of mood. Like, so I just uh, <laughs> feel sorry for myself, ch yeah. eat chicken noodle soup, and 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 freaking watch terrible television. I had a lot of, I've had a lot of baths too. I've taken like, oh my god, yeah, yeah. taken a lot of baths, yeah, baths, yeah, candles. I think I've, yeah, I think I've taken more baths in this last week than I have in the previous like do you, ten years. Do you leave the lights on or you turn them all? No, down? I turn them off. I light a candle yeah. like Justin What's said. What's the music? Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, a little, I uh, little sade. I have, I have <laughs> yeah. I got a TV in the room, so I actually, I actually put on one of those movies. Those movies. I've actually been going back watching old like classics, like Days and Confused. I put that one on the other day, and uh, I get, my, I get my oh, little great bath. Movie. I do my little bath salts, and then my little. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait! Bath salts. Yeah, I got bath salts in there. Oh, like legit ones, oh, yeah. not, the, not the ones that turn you into so, a Yeah. Okay, so what's your your go to sick movie, right? Because I know we all kind of have that growing up. Like mine was always Big Trouble, Little China. Hell yeah, dude! Me too. Yeah, uh, I would watch here. that like religiously when I was sick. I love it. Uh, what what did what did I watch so far that I was? Few good man. Oh no, Shawshank Redemption. Oh, there you go. Shawshank, oh, yeah, good, Shawshank yeah. Redemption is one, and I already watched that already, so that's that's like a good. Well, you know what it is because I think when you're sick, you're locked up. You feel, I feel like I'm in prison, <laughs> so watching like the, <laughs> watching the Great Escape, you know, break it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, my my, you know, I told you guys that I was supposed to go to my grandfather's 90th, but now I can't go, obviously. Yeah, but he he wanted me to to do a speech for him, so I decided that what I could because it, it's so sad. My grandfather's such a He's the most macho yet sensitive person you'll ever meet in, in your entire life. He FaceTimed me 
and you know just to see how I was doing and then he teared up because I'm not going to be at his party so I felt so bad right so what I did is I wrote a speech and and Doug's going to record me and we're going to play it at his uh, at his birthday and nice. dude I didn't think this would happen as I'm writing the speech about my grandfather I'm like emotional as fuck just because like read some of it to me I had to stop and leave the room several times trying to oh, read wow. this. Yeah, dude. So I'm hoping I can get through the whole thing. I want you to do it on the green screen, dude. Come uh, on, let your let man. Doug let Doug have some fun with it, and you know, put it's you... a lot of work though. What are, Doug's gonna be is doing it a, bunch of a work? lot of work, Doug? It's more work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm willing to play along. <laughs> Come on, you're quarantined. You're not hey. doing anything either. You know what I'm saying? What well, are you Doug's do? always doing? Something. What are you doing over in your quarantine over there? No one's asking you what's going on. You've been awfully quiet. Hey, I've been mixing it up. Uh, I've been watching more movies than usual. Mm, yeah. I've watched uh, a couple series. I've been watching the one on How to Be a Tyrant. Oh, that's a good which one, Which I dude. think everybody yeah. should watch because it seems very timely for some reason. It's happening right now. Um, I watched the docu little docu-series from Val Kilmer. Oh, I haven't watched that yet. Yeah, that's pretty oh, interesting, actually. I turned that off. You, you, you kept going with it, huh? It oh, was man. a little awkward for me. It's, it's rough. It's rough. I mean, that guy was on the top of his game, uh, you know, Iceman, yeah. all that, but uh, he had throat cancer. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah, yeah. I know. It sucks. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's really sad uh, to see. Yeah. Um, it, it was just weird that he, he filmed so much of his own life, you know, at first. It felt kind of pretty narcissistic but uh yeah like it gets real sad when you find out that he has throat cancer yeah also uh cocaine cowboys that was an interesting that was a good documentary one. yeah mm. i watched that that was really good actually mm. and then uh in in you know in addition to that i've been doing some audio books uh obviously i have some work to do at home it's not all fun and games uh, reviewing shows, doing financial stuff, that type of thing. Yeah, so, I feel like you and I are working. I think Sal's pretty much vacationing. You know? Yeah, so I think that's what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just a <laughs> typical week, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying this show. Head over to MySerenityKids.com and check out some of the best baby food and baby food products you'll find anywhere. Very healthy, grass-fed meats, uh, grain-free snacks and puffs, uh, no preservatives, uh, great stuff. This is the only stuff that I feed my baby son. Adam does the same thing for his kid, Serenity Kids. Again, it's myserenitykids.com. Just don't forget to use the code MP20 for a discount. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. Our first caller is Haley from Michigan. Hi, Haley. How can we help you? Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question and taking time. Uh, I'm currently a professional basketball player. I just graduated from college in 2020, so I haven't had a weight room literally since then. And I was just kind of wondering um, how I should go about my training now that I'm playing overseas. And I'm also now playing in the summer with my team in Detroit. So I basically have to be ready all season to be like in shape and everything. So I'm wondering how to make like proper gains strength wise, agility wise. Um, functionality wise while staying in shape and being able to perform well on the court. Okay. Do you not, you don't have access to a gym? Is that, is that still? I do now. Okay. You do but now. Um, it's just like recently, but I think last summer I didn't. So I was doing a bunch of banded workouts and all like the hills and sand and like outdoor stuff. But I just recently now have like a normal weight room again. Oh, cool. Well, you know, there's a important part to what you said, which is that you're going to be playing year round. So yeah. it's not like you have a true off season where you're not competing and you could focus more energy towards other attributes with your training because you're consistently competing and playing. We need to be very careful with how we approach uh, our training. What you don't want to do is sacrifice your practice and your skills training for strength training. It's not a worthy, yeah. it's not worth the trade. Okay. So, okay. so what I'm going to recommend you do is, is maybe one day a week, maybe max two days a week of strength training at the most. Uh, even okay. one day. E <laughs> That's going to be hard for me. Uh, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. How often are you are you practicing with your team? How often are you guys doing your own workouts? Um. So I, we just finished my season in the States, and then I'll be going like next month or the end of August next month to go overseas. But I was practicing with my team three times a week, and then – uh, most of the time I'll probably do two a days with that to get like some shooting sessions up and then I'll probably go on my own at least another three 
time. So I would say like five to six, I'm doing at least basketball. Like yeah. 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 Once, once a week. week. One day a week. That's one, all. One day, yeah. <laughs> okay. One, one day a week um, of strength training will be perfect for you. And you can throw in mobility work if you want during. Okay. Your- yeah. I try to do that as much as possible as well, just because I'm really, I'm not flexible. So I try to at least be mobile in what I do. So. Perfect. And now, uh, do you have do you have Maps Performance? No, I currently don't have any training guide, which is like kind of where I was looking to go for that too. Because I have a good like I think I have a good baseline strength and understanding of what to do. But I just in terms of programming, I'm not like I don't know how to go about that yet. Uh, well, here's what I'll do. I'm going to give you Maps Performance. And now in Maps Performance, okay. there's three foundational workouts a week. I don't want you to do three. Okay. I, want, okay. I want you to just do one. So go ahead and look at the workouts. But the and, mobility stuff she's okay. be doing every day. Well, yeah, totally. I'm going to interject here for a second, too. I would think that phase two uh, is something I want you to focus on a little bit more in terms of, uh, you know, multi-planar type of strength training where we're getting okay. a little more unilateral work um, in season, mainly because, you know, I'm trying to, to, to maintain and reinforce that stability around the joint because you're a professional level. It's all mm-hmm. about long, longevity and making sure right. that uh, yeah. we're not putting too much damage on the joint. So yeah, that in combo with the mobility sessions can be perfect. Okay. Now, would you guys, what what time of the day would you guys recommend her doing her mobility training? Do you, you think she should get up and do it first thing? Do you think it should be a, a post workout po- or post training when you, when you want her doing mobility? Oh boy. I would, I would think it would be great if you did, yep. you know, 15 minutes Priming in the morning and yep. mobility uh, afterwards. Absolutely. Okay. Exa- exactly what I was going to say, you know, do some in the morning, 10, 15 minutes. And then, you know, again, after your training, whenever you're playing, you know, doing your practice or even after your workout. And then Haley, do you, uh, do you follow Paul Fabrits? You know who that is? No, I, oh, PJ. Yes. Is that? Yes. PJ Performance. PJ. Yeah. Yeah. I follow. Yeah. I like stalk him as well. I kind of have all his podcasts and stuff. Yeah. Uh, He's awesome. Paul, Paul's the man. So uh, the content that he puts out, uh, not even and even his strength training program stuff that he has to align for athletes like everything he's putting out is fire. So that's a, a great person to uh, to follow okay. and pick up on. But as far as uh, training, like Sal said, one day a week out of the maps performance. Okay. Justin, great recommendation with the the second phase. Stay in that, and then pretty much every day you could be doing the mobility work. So uh, and you can okay. pull you can pull the mobility workout straight from maps performance. So you can use those to follow along. And then, uh, okay. and then I definitely would be keep consuming uh, Paul Fabrits. I mean, his his contents yeah. fire. Yeah, that's what I was trying to because I listen to you guys a lot, and the one thing you guys always say is trying to like pull back and not do too much. Hmm. And in college, I definitely did way too much. I was always tired, and I think that's just kind of how college is. But now, as a professional, I'm trying to like unlearn a lot of the training habits that I have because I just don't think they're that necessary, and I can be in shape without killing myself every practice. So I'm trying to like learn that, but I was lifting like four times a week and yeah. trying to do like agility twice a week and then <laughs> basketball every day. And I was, it wasn't working out for me. No. So uh, Haley, I, you, that's why I wanted to reach out to you guys. Haley, you should feel good okay. after each session. So that's how you, that's, yeah, that's right. how you judge it. So if you finish practice or you finish a workout and you're like, man, I am wasted or I, I yeah. can't move <laughs> or I'm really stiff or I'm too sore. You overdid it. You should feel good, especially because you're playing uh, year round that. So this is, right. this is especially important for someone like you. You should feel good after each well, one. So use that as a gauge. You're a pro now. I mean, at this, at this level, right, yeah. you know, uh, that that's where the, the, men, the mentality shifts now for all coaches that are training pros. It now becomes about longevity and taking care of you. I mean, mm-hmm. you've put a recovery. lot of, that's right. Recovery right, yep. and, and, and making sure that, uh, we keep your skills <laughs> where they're at because you got there. Yeah. You obviously <laughs> have got that you wouldn't be where you're at. So, that's the right. main focus is to take care of your body. Okay. That all makes sense. Yeah, I can do that. All right. Perfect. And we're going to send mass performance over to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. No problem. Thanks for calling awesome. in. Yep. Thanks for answering. Thanks for taking time out of your day and just build content all the time. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Haley. Yeah. So you still there, there Justin? Yeah. You didn't cut me off. Good. Oh, perfect. You know, um, I'm I'm so glad we have athletes calling in because uh, it can definitely be confusing because you'll hear, okay, we're doing all these practices. Oh, no, I also need to focus on agility. Oh, no, I need to also build strength. And what they tend to do is they tend to just add on top of each one. So like, okay, five days a week I'm doing this. Now I'm going to do four days a week of this. And I guess I could do strength training after I do those workouts. And it's just... Yeah. 
It's just well, way too much. And here's the beauty of this is one of my favorite things about resistance training. You don't have to do it very often to reap a lot of the benefits. You really don't. And if you're an athlete, well, especially an athlete, because oh yeah. you're not your goal, your desired outcome isn't pack on as much muscle as I can or get as shredded as I can. It's about performance. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it, it, your mindset has to completely shift. Yeah. You know, it's funny how um, it, it still blows my mind that as far as we are with with science and training and nutrition and recovery that this is still really, really prevalent in the like college down. You know, it's it seems that it doesn't until you get to that professional level do you start getting like these really high and that there obviously there's exceptions to the rule. Like I know a lot of people who have had had great college coaches and even some people that might have had a great high, but it's more of an anomaly to have this coach or get somebody like a Justin who's helping a high school team out yep. that knows what they're actually doing. Most of these these kids are getting coached by you know, volunteers or people that this is kind of like their side profession. You know, they have like a real job and then this is the side thing they do because they have a passion for the sport and they're advising yeah. these kids on, on training protocols. And it's, and you think, and they, everybody, they, they all lean towards the mental toughness part, right? The, the idea of training yep. that hard and that consistent, sure. It has some value as far as mental toughness and, but that's not everything. Like, especially with someone that has high, high of a level as she is like, well, yeah, especially at that level. And again, there's there's a dip, massive difference when, you know, you go up in levels from high school to college to the professional level. And so you really have to assess what's going to be best for the athlete. And at that level, it's really just about keeping the body healthy and performing because you're already at the highest, uh, you know, peak of your performance. And we need to just sustain that at that point. Yeah, I, I remember when I figured this out as a trainer, I had a client that was a competitive triathlete and then he wanted to do an Ironman. And the beauty of this was he obviously was very meticulous about his times. So he knew if his performance was improving or if it was declining. And initially when he hired me, we were doing three days a week of strength training. And very shortly he'd come to me and be like, you know, I know this is supposed to help, but my times are getting worse. And eventually we reduced his training down to once a week and the workouts were like 45 minutes. Why? Because he was doing so much other stuff, right? To train for his bike and his swim and his, his run. When we did that, then we saw tremendous improvements. And then I started to really figure it out. Like, oh, okay. We only need to do a little bit to really boost his performance. Any more than that, and it's too much. All right. Our next caller is Isaiah from Ohio. What's up, Isaiah? How can we help you? Hey, good. I appreciate you guys taking my call. This is pretty cool. Um, I have a quick question. I'm going to be a police officer here starting actually tomorrow. Um, I start at the department um, next after next week. They're going to be sending me to the academy uh, for four months. Um, I follow mostly mass program, do um, pretty much all resistance training. Um, up until I found out I was going to the academy, I started implementing more cardio. I'm not a cardio guy. I hate running. <laughs> um, but my main, my question is how do I work in um, resistance training around everything that I'm going to be doing at the academy? So obviously most every single morning um, we do, you know, the normal push-ups, sit-ups in about two to three, four miles of running every morning, um, which is quite a bit for me coming from my background of little running um, up until this point. Um, so I'm wondering how to program. I follow pretty much all MAPS programs. I have quite a bit, few of them. Um, but I'm trying to figure out what's going to be the best programming for me while I'm trying to manage both the working out still in the morning um, and then the stresses of whatever I'm doing during the day um, as far as the training that they put me through. Um, and then how, what would you guys say would be like the best program for like after work? Should I be focusing on, you know, mainly recovery, um, just do four months of figuring out mobility, working on that because that's something I'm lacking or is there a way I can still implement um, a good resistance training routine and not overstress my body? Basically? Yeah, I would, I would do an anabolic, although you just made another point about wanting to focus on mobility, which there's nothing wrong with blending uh, the programs, right? Here's an example where right. I would do this with somebody. I might follow the foundational training from anabolic and take the mobility days from performance. I think since you okay. just said, I wouldn't have said that until you just pointed out that that's an area that you know you can work on. And so this might be a great opportunity for you to implement that um, 
but I, yeah, I'd say maps anabolic with the mobility days from performance. Yeah, well, I, Isaiah. First off, uh, I appreciate you doing what you're going to do. We need more good uh, police officers, so that's awesome. But you're going to a police academy, right? So this will be four mm -hmm. months of academy, and I'm sure you're pretty familiar. I'm sure you know what you're going to be doing. It's it's somewhat grueling. There's a lot of workouts. You're going to be training with them on an almost daily basis, right? Yeah. Yeah. So with all those workouts and training that you're doing with them. You don't need to add much more to your, your total programming. In fact, if you try to add too much, you're going to run into some problems. Honestly, right. to be quite honest, I've trained a few people through the academy. I've actually had clients who hired me and then went through the academy, and they tried to follow their normal workouts while they also did the academy. And within a month, they were like, this is just uh, too much. So honestly, what I'm going to recommend is do the academy workouts and then add like another day, if you want, of strength training and then mainly focus on mobility. Are you going to lose some of your max strength and stuff like that? Yeah, probably, but not a ton. But that's not the point. The point is you want to get through the academy, become a police officer. When you graduate, then you can go back to your old training and make sure you incorporate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Anabolic how, one day a week and then mobility That's the rest. it. Yeah, that's it. So like one day. How, I would do how long is, is your academy? It's four months. Right around four months. I'm not exactly four sure. Four months? Four months, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah during that... Yeah. I would say during that whole period of time, do maybe one foundational workout a week um, uh, and then just do the academy workouts. And yeah, you're probably going to lose some of your you know, bodybuilding gains or whatever you got from the MAPS programs, but that's okay. You're kind of getting conditioned and following their protocol. But when you're done with it, you can go back to your old programming and you know maintain a certain level of uh, you know of running because you're going to need some of that stamina, of course, in your in the line of duty. Um, but right. yeah, don't don't try to like throw everything at your body while you're doing this. The academy is yeah. somewhat strenuous. The beauty of it is you know muscle memory, and so like right now, like you said, you, you haven't really adapted to the conditioning and the durability yet. So I would embrace that as your new adaptation focus. And really just try and reinforce your joints with mobility practices to try and keep everything healthy and moving forward. But, you know, embrace it for now and just uh, try your best to just kind of focus on, uh, you know, gaining that, that type of conditioning. Isaiah, do you own anabolic and performance already? I have anabolic. I don't have performance. Okay, there we go. We yeah. can shoot them performance. Yeah, we'll send uh, uh, performance yeah. over to you. And, and so you're using the mobility days from performance and then following a MAPS foundational day one. Yeah, one a week. And and honestly, even with that recommendation, still listen to your body because there is a possibility that that may even be taxing because of all the work that you're going to be doing there. Yeah, so. from what I recall, I know that each academy is probably different, right? Uh, because they're run by the, the city, but... I worked with police, with the people who went through San Jose Police Academy, and from what I recall, it was like daily workouts, <clears throat> including running, lots of calisthenics, and then at some point, they reduced the workouts and would focus more on, uh, you know, like certain things like how to take someone down, how to... You know, mm -hmm. hold, you know, uh, you know how to use your weapon in a particular way. You know, law focus. It, when that happens, then you can incorporate more of your workouts. But you know, to put it differently, your priority is the ac academy. So place mm -hmm. your energy and focus on the academy. That's where your energy and focus is. So stay in that. <clears throat> and then if you add anything, it's to complement it. Don't try to supple Don't try to replace it. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. All right, perfect. And where's the um? Just the other part of the question was, I was thinking like going into it, I wanted to try and lean out a bit. I'm a little higher on my body. I'm coming from like a 12 hour shift <laughs> nights job. So my sleep schedule has been terrible. I put on a little weight since, since starting the job, but I was wondering like, should I go into it trying to lean out, like keep my calories low? Or should I just really focus on, you know, getting through it, not really have, I think what, that's, what that's, na I think that's naturally going to happen. Yeah. Focus on your, yeah. Per just yeah. yeah. But I'm worried about said. it because I'm, I have quite a bit of muscle on me right now. I'm worried that most of that with all the running is going to be my muscle going away and I'm not going to be like leaning out. No, 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 no. The body, the body, you're, it, to, to utilize uh, muscle, it's, a, it's an expensive tissue and the body doesn't want to use muscle. It will it'd much rather utilize fat as a source of fuel if it doesn't have carbohydrates, right? So if it doesn't have you know, glucose, it's going to move over to fat before it wants to move over. So your body does not want to 
to burn muscle. So don't be afraid of of that going on. You're not going to lose mostly muscle, especially if you're doing things like push-ups and pull-ups and sit-ups and mm-hmm. then one day a week of, of foundational training. <coughs> you'd actually probably be really surprised. You're probably going to hang on to a good amount of muscle mass. You'll probably just lean out. Even if you do lose a little bit of muscle and strength, as soon as you get out of the academy, it's you're going to probably rebound really nice. That's, that's the big one. Like, Don't worry about it. It'll it, When you're done with the academy, you can kind of go back to your old – Training, you know, again, incorporate some more stamina and the muscle, whatever little muscle you lose, you'll mm-hmm. gain right back. As far as getting leaner is concerned, just eat healthy to feed performance. You'll probably lean out from that. That's, you know, but I wouldn't make it a focus. I wouldn't sit there and be like, <laughs> I'm going to go into calorie deficit. I got to get shredded because the priority is the academy, not your physique. No, you need the energy to, to perform at your best. So keep that as a main focus and that'll just naturally occur because it's a totally new stimulus. Right. Okay. All right, man. We're going to send you over Maps Performance, okay? Awesome. I really appreciate that. No problem. Get those bad guys, all right? <laughs> all right. They don't even know. <laughs> they don't even know. They, they don't even they know. Don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate Get you guys taking I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing where MindPub goes from me. You guys have changed a lot about the way I work out and the way I talk about fitness. So it's awesome. pretty awesome. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thank you, Isaiah. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. You Get too. better. Yeah, that's, um, again, you know, it, I get it, by the way, because I'm like that. If I had to train, I, I did this, hap- this happened for me when I did jujitsu or judo. I remember I'd be like, oh, man, I don't want to lose my gains. And it actually took away from my performance in those sports because I was too focused on, you know, the muscle, the way it looked and stuff. It's like you got to prioritize one thing or the other, and then it comes back. It comes back so easy and so fast. I, actually, I actually think that he's going to get – because this sounds like it's so out of the norm for him, the way they're going to be training, body weight exercises. You're right. He running. might get surprised, right? I, I bet you, you – it's just like what happens when you take a guy like one of it's us. Like newbie gains. Yeah, yeah. right. And and we're and you're so into uh, lifting weights all the time, then all of a sudden you do a body weight program or like a suspension trainer program, <clears> and you see – phenomenal results from it the body is just it's just a, a new adaptation and i bet his body ends up uh, loving him for it so i i, I imagine if he so long, so long as he doesn't eat like an asshole he makes good food choices and and stays fed and and then uh follows the academy and stuff like that and maybe one day a week of maps anabolic i think that he's going to be surprised on on how he shapes up from it yeah agreed our next caller is joanna from florida hi joanna how can we help you? I'm hoping you guys can help me out with my current routine because I'm going to be 50 next month. And Woo. as everybody says, things have changed. So I've been working out about 10 years and lifting a lot of weights, trying to build muscle because I know that that is something that is going to rapidly dissipate if I don't. But I'm just not um, progressing. I'm the fatigue is a real issue. Um, I have these great plans of how I'm going to work out. And then I guess it's changes in hormones, aging. I don't really know, but I'm trying to be on top of everything from circadian rhythm to nutrition, to sleep, to all the things. And um, what's the best way to go about all of this? I have a job that I have to sit at like right this minute for eight hours a day and a 45 minute commute on either end. So I'm like obsessive about trying to get my workout in in the mornings before I even get here because when I get home, I am dead. So I'm looking up at your your question that you had sent in and it says that uh, boot camps and body pump, is that how you've maintained your fitness up until this point? Yeah, about, um, I've been working out at home for probably eight years. Okay. That's that's usually okay, and you're also saying that you just you're, again in the same question that Adam's uh, pointing to that you you feel fried after your workouts. Well, I try to go hard enough to make a difference. I mean, I'm not going to mess around. I want to make sure that it's progressing as much as possible. But it, but it's not. So this is what I want you to 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 consider because I think oftentimes, especially those of us who are you know, high achievers, or we like to, you know, uh, you know, accomplish things through grit and effort is we tend to either lie to ourselves or ignore the signals. Whatever you're doing is too much. So it really doesn't matter what you're doing. It's just too much. Mm-hmm. Obviously your body's telling you the right dose is going to get your body to progress you, th- more than that. It's not going to, it's not going to happen. And you can't push through that. There's no way of adding even more to too much to make it work. 
it just makes things even worse. I'm so also going to go out. Down. I'm also going to go out on a limb and just say that your body is probably adapted to that type of training. I'm assuming if you're into the body pump and boot camp type of training, it's probably high paced, low rest periods, kind of you know get it, getting a pump and a sweat. Uh, versus strict sw- sets of like four, four or five reps, and then rest periods for a minute and a half to three minutes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I found that yeah, I can't even do like high intensity training for more than about fifteen minutes. Some of them are longer, and I'm just like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, Maps Anabolic all the way. I yeah. would put you on Maps Anabolic. Follow the program as it's laid out. You could do three. You could do three mm-hmm. foundational workouts a week. Do some trigger sessions on the off days. Watch what happens. Watch what happens to your body. Now, you you mentioned some about hormones and all that stuff. I don't think there's an issue there, but if you do think that there's a, a hormonal issue, you can get it checked out uh, with our partners at mphormones.com, and they'll do a whole assessment with you and all that stuff. But I I'm I think the issue is <clears throat> your training is all wrong for your body. Yeah, and it, I I would go maps anabolic straight all the way through. Follow it as it's laid out. Trust the programming. Within three weeks, you'll notice a difference. You'll feel like, oh, more energy, stronger. And then after about 60 days, you should start to see some visible So results. long as you stick, truly stick to it. So that the, I'm going to make sure, okay, when someone's trained this way, so one of the hardest things when I have a client uh, uh, like this that's trained similar mm-hmm. to you is getting out of that mentality of like the workout needs to be this, it needs to be this, I'm sweating and I need to feel like I, I kicked ass. That yeah. you, you don't need to feel like that. And, and, and it's also really hard to get someone like you to sit still and actually truly rest for two minutes before you go do your next set. You know, you would be the client who would always be telling me, I'm ready to go, Adam. I'm ready to go. Yeah, feels like nothing. Yeah. yeah. I'm ready. Next yeah. set. Next set. Can we do the next set? And I'm, and I'm constantly going, relax. You're doing good. Just re- we're resting. We're resting right now. We're going to wait. You still got another 30, 45 seconds before I want you to do your next set. And that's really hard to do for someone who has trained a particular way for so long. So probably the biggest challenge of MAPS Anabolic for you won't be so much the exercise programming in it, but more so the mentality that you need to now have going into these workouts for them to be truly effective. Do not look at them as, oh, I want to crush these and get through these. That's not the objective here. Follow the blueprints. Give yourself the long rest periods in between. Try and get stronger. I want each set. I want to be stronger. It's not about how much I'm sweating. It's not how much my body is burning. It's all about following the program the way it's laid out. Think about it this way, Joanna. When you're telling your body to build strength and build muscle, okay. Think of all the hormones associated with adding muscle, right? So. You're going to get more youthful levels of hormones as a result of this. Now, if you continue down the path that you've been going on, which is boot camp style workouts, body pump, obviously frying your CNS, you're probably telling your body to not build muscle. And in fact, you might be telling your body to start to lose muscle. Now think of the hormones associated with that process, right? Elevated cortisol, growth growth hormone, not youthful an imbalance between estrogen and progesterone. I wouldn't be surprised if you noticed changes, not just in energy, but also in libido. You might also notice more cravings as your yeah. body is trying to get more more sugar in your body to you know, keep you alive, essentially. So... <laughs> <laughs> am I am I am I painting? Am I like accurate? Am I hitting all the points here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that's why I thought like I don't know another source to go to because like I study this constantly. Like, what what am I doing wrong? Because I'm trying my best to do every little thing that is going to give me some positive outcomes. So. You, you, are, you, are you saying not working out every day? Oh, yeah. Oh, two to three days a week. That yeah. is it. Now you, can, now, you can walk um, every day. You can do mobility every day. You want to do yoga every day. That's totally fine. Strength train two or three days a week. That's it. Yeah. Something you're too to consider uh, as you switch this up and focus a little more on strength training and you're sitting so much and, you know, you're in your commute and your muscles are going to feel like they're locking up and tight. You want to really reinforce good posture. Uh, so to, to establish a good ritual, uh, to address those things like the hip flexors, you know, your shoulders protracting, um, you know, that's something, especially, uh, if you can find time throughout the day and get up out of your chair 
and kind of go against the wall. And something I recommend, we have uh, uh, one of the webinars, if you haven't checked out yet, you know, the Prime webinar, uh, where we kind of go into some of those easy things to do uh, just against a wall uh, to reinforce good posture and to, to really attack those so you don't start locking up and having issues uh, as you start actually like focusing a little bit more on lifting weights and strength training. Yeah, it's, it's mapsprimewebinar.com. Do you have Maps Anabolic, by the way? No, I don't. All right, we're going to we're gonna send that uh, right over to you and just follow that to a T. On the other days, you can walk, do yoga, work on mobility. And here's what you'll experience, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be, you know, Nostradamus right now or, or – Okay. South, I'll be Salstradamus. <laughs> <coughs> Here's what you're going to feel. <laughs> in, initially, when you follow that it. ego barely fits in the door. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> here's here's he what. He said it. Salstein. Hey, right? Einstein, hey Salstein. look, I'm making the prediction. Yes. If I'm wrong, you can DM me, okay? But here's what you'll notice. Okay. The first week, you're going to be like, this is not enough. This doesn't feel like enough. I feel like I'm not doing enough working out. What's going on? By week two, you should notice an increase in your libido. That'll happen by week two. By week three, you'll start to get better sleep. By the fourth week, you'll start to see a difference in the mirror. And then after, you'll start to think to yourself, I'm getting leaner. This is very strange. I feel like I'm burning less calories. Why am I getting leaner? That's how you're going to feel when you start to train your body properly. I, I would like to add one more recommendation to, to you. Uh, I would love to see you follow MAPS Anabolic. And then because you were probably used to training every day and I don't, I never like to break that from a client. If I've had a client who has disciplined themselves to exercise and, and do things to take care of their body on a daily basis, I just, I want to switch their focus, right? So strength training three days a week and then your other three to four days that you would normally be weight training or doing boot camp stuff, I want you to go for a walk. And on your walk, I would love for you to listen to the Res resistance training revolution the book that Sal just wrote this book oh. is this book and the content that is in this book is literally will speak to you and i just think it would be very therapeutic it would be good for you to listen to that while you go for a nice walk go for a walk on the other days that you're not doing the resistance training and listen to the book <clears throat> okay that's my recommendation Thanks for calling in, Joanna. We'll send you maps and a ball. Yep. I appreciate you. You're making my commute bearable. So thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. All right. You know, this highlights. She listens to the podcast regularly. Yeah. It's taken her this long to call or even consider changing what she was doing. That's how hard it is to break. No, that's why, and that's yeah. why. Typical client. Yeah. yeah 100%. 100%. Yeah. She is like, she's spot on to normal. She's like 70% right? of the people I trained. Right there. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. When we, I feel sometimes when we 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 talk to these people on the the Q and A like this, I always feel bad because I feel like they think that we're kind of like hammering them. But it's like, dude, this is you are literally so yeah. normal. Like these are is, the same conversations yeah. we've had like over the years, like every single time. So it's it's very typical. And it'll and the hardest part of this will not be her dis discipline to be consistent or her ability to bring intensity to the workout. It will literally be to follow the programming, to back off of all the intense training when she feels like, oh my God, I can do more, to not do more because this is the this is the client who would finish her workout with you and then you'd see her out in the out in the gym floor an hour later still doing more yep. exercises after yep. you train. Yep. I can't tell you how many times I kick people out of the gym. Oh, yeah. I, I used to do that. I'd see a client like, what are you doing over here? Get well, I, I really hope that she, I hope she she gets the book and listens to the book because I feel like what that what you wrote in Resistance Training Revolution really speaks to a client like this, and I think that it can be mm -hmm. life changing. I yeah. really do, especially someone like her who's got the discipline and she's in pretty damn good shape, at least what it looked like from where I was sitting. So I mean, she's not like she's got a long way to go somewhere. She just needs to to shift her mindset. Our next caller is Jeff from Idaho. Hey, what's up, Jeff? How can we help you? Uh, hey guys, thanks for having me on. Uh, I really appreciate what you guys do. Um, so I'm just going to give you a little quick background and that'll help me uh, kind of set up my question. So about a year ago, I really started to get into lifting for the first time. And by that, I mean, I had lifted a lot before, but I had never actually progressively overloaded my lift. So I started doing that um, as well as tracking, you know, macros and calories. And between about this time last year and the end of the year, I lost about 35 pounds. Wow. And um, I went from around 200 to 165. And so at the start of the year, I still kind of had a, a skinny fat physique. So I thought I would just keep progressively overloading and making sure I was hitting my calorie and macro goes and just recomp as much as I could. 
And this worked really well for about five or six months. Uh, my physique was progressing, my lips got uh, heavier, and my metabolism got faster. But these last two or three months, um, everything just really seems to have kind of stalled out. And so my question is, is this my body telling me that I need to go on a little bit of a bulk um, in order to put on more muscle, even though I'm not necessarily as lean as I'd like to be? Or do you think this might be an issue with my programming and if I benefit following something like uh, MAPS Anabolic? Probably both. Yeah, I was just going to say both. Yeah, I would yeah. say go on a little bit of a bulk and change your workout program. This whole time, have you been following a similar workout? Uh, yeah, it's been a, a four-day upper-lower split mostly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, just yo, mm -hmm. for sure. Switching up your programming, adding a couple cal extra calories in there, and watch you break through that plateau. Oh, yeah. I would go MAPS Anabolic. Definitely. Do three foundational workouts a week. Do three trigger sessions on your off days. That's it. Follow that, and then watch what happens to your body. Yeah, and bump your calories. That's it. Yeah, bump your calories. You don't even have to bump them that much. I, yeah, two, I bet 300 you, calories. Yeah, I bet you if he just mm -hmm. changed his programming, his body would just start to Yeah, but why not do both, though? You know, Let's yeah. have some fun with it. Your body's going to respond to the new adaptation, give it some extra calories so you really pack on some muscle, which is only going to speed up your metabolism more. Even though you're not at your ideal body fat percentage, this is not going to hurt you. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. I uh, guess, uh, do you guys have any tips? Because like, I guess since I, you know, I went through that cycle of losing the weight, sometimes it can, it, sometimes it kind of like freaks me out seeing it go back up. I don't know if you have any tips for just dealing with that mental hurdle. Get rid yeah. of the scale. Yeah. Don't stop weighing yourself um, and judge your, your progress by your strength and your performance yeah. in the gym. Strength and performance. That's your focus now. That's it. Here's another tip. How long have you been listening to us, by the way? Uh, a couple months or so. Do you, do you consider us to be experts? I would, yeah. Beautiful. Just listen to us. That's all. Just do it. Just do what we tell you. Just do what we tell you. Very simple. Just try, hey, listen. I, you know, I'll ask you for trust right now. I won't have to ask you again. I promise you. Just do what we tell you. Don't weigh yourself. Give yourself a few months. It's Maps Anabolics about three months long. At the end of that okay. three months, you're going to be like, oh yeah, that's it. I don't. I'm not going to ever doubt. Uh, what these guys say ever again? Yeah, no, I think you're in a great place right now. You've uh, you've changed your physique quite a bit on your own already, kind of doing the same thing mm -hmm. and just simply following a program that's uh, a lot different. Which, if you've been running a, a body part split type of a routine, going to anabolic full body is going to shock your system. You do that with a, a little bit of a mini bulk since you've probably been at maintenance or lower calorie to lose weight. Uh, I think that you're going to see a great response, and I think you should notice in the first couple weeks. Oh, totally. Yeah. Awesome. Where are you at in Idaho? Okay. Uh, uh, suburb of Boise. Bo in Boise? Suburb. Oh, suburb uh, of Boise. Like Middleton. Meridian? Middleton. It's a suburb of Boise. Like Meridian or Eagle or like we're familiar with uh, that? A little west of Meridian. Okay. Yeah, good deal. Yep. Nice. We have friends up there. Yep. All right. Thanks for calling in, Jeff. Yep. Thanks for having me. No problem. That change in workout programming makes a big difference. Yeah. People don't realize that. It's like, I've been doing the same workout for five months. My body stopped responding. It's like, change it. Just, he's going to see He's gonna yeah. see, oh. He's gonna see great results. Oh, huge. It's going to be uh, like night and day, especially because he's already been doing what he's been doing for five or six months. It was working. It stopped. Well, that's the biggest hurdle is the mental part. Like A lot of people just are a little bit weary, leery of changing things up because that's of the unknown. And so, yeah, so a lot of times as trainers, we just have to reinforce that for them. I, I also, I wanted him to do the calorie increase too, because I bet you money, if he lost all that weight, I guarantee you he's probably closer to a, a running under his caloric maintenance or right around maintenance, right? So he's probably been, hasn't been in a surplus in a very long time. So just feeding his body more while also switching a program, I think he's going to yeah. see strength gains. I think his metabolism is going to fire right up. I think he'll see his body change right away, like... Guy's in a great position. It's the perfect time to do that, and it really will be about trusting the process and not you know not worrying about a couple pounds going on the scale because he's probably going to be building muscle pretty quick. Agreed. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have lots of free guides that can help you do everything from burn body fat to build muscle, improve your mobility. We have guides for personal trainers. Lots of guides. They're all free. Mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. Me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.